we are going to take a look at Llama 3B and Mistral 7, Llama 3.1 versus Mistral 7B for RAG. So I'm sure this is a talk that you guys all came for. Um, so this is my talk. So um, this is the most important talk of the night. I haven't given a, uh, I haven't given a, a tech talk in a while, but um, sometimes you just kind of got to do one of these every so often so people still remember that you can. Uh, so that's what this is for. So today we're going to be talking about Llama 3.1. Uh, I'm using the AP version, and we're using Mistral 7B for RAG. And we're really just doing a toy presentation, so don't take any of this like very seriously. Take it with a grain of salt. Kind of use it as like a, hey, this is like a way that we can uh, compare these models. This is not like the end-all, be-all of these models. But before we get into this, uh, oops, OK. Um, I want everyone to kind of do a little bit of interaction here. Who thinks that the 318B model was faster? No one thinks it was faster. Who thinks Mistral 7B was faster? All right, so clearly five people are raising their hands. Let's, come on, let's, we're gonna redo this, okay? Who thinks that Llama 3.1AB was faster? Raise your hand. You don't, have to, you don't have to scream and clap, but thank you, Yi. All right, so that means the rest of you guys all think that Mistral 7B was fast. I'm going to repeat this until you guys, until everybody raises their hand, or at least a, small, a large portion of the audience raises your hand. Raise your hand. Go. Okay, Llama 3.1. Faster, faster. This is faster. Okay. For RAG. Faster for RAG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mistral 7B. Raise your hand. All right. Okay, a good portion of you are raising your hand. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, raise your hand. I see you guys. All right. So we'll just do a quick tech review, right? So you guys have all built RAG. Who's built a RAG application? All right, great. So you guys kind of know what goes on in a RAG application, right? The whole idea is that all you're doing is you're giving your data to an LLM. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take an LLM. That's your core piece of your RAG app. You're going to take a vector store. You're going to take an embedding model. And then you'll probably use some sort of frameworks. So uh, later, we've got a demo from someone who used to work on Llama Index, uh, which is not the framework I use for this. Uh, so a little bit of information about Llama 3.1 uh, came out July 31st. Um, there's the 8B model, the 70B model, and the 405 billion parameter model. Uh, we're using the 8 billion parameter model. Um, the main reason for this is because this is like a similar in size to the Mistral 7B model. I don't want to compare it to the 405 like billion parameter model. That doesn't seem very fair to me. Um, and then the upgrade from Llama 3 is that now it has 188, 128,000 size context window. So this is just quick background on Llama 3.1. Uh, they spent a lot of money to build this. And Mistral came out about nine months ago, September 27th. Actually, it's August, so 11 months ago. Uh, September 27th, 2023. And this has about 7.3 billion parameters. They say it has a 4,000 uh, token sliding context window. Basically, that means it can handle 4,000 tokens at a time, but that doesn't mean it can only handle 4,000 tokens. At least, this is the claim. OK, so here's what we did for our experiment. We took a basic RAG app, and um, we put in a bunch of Wikipedia cities. And I used OctoAI for the LLM, because they provide access to a lot of open source LLMs. And they also give me a lot of free compute. And I used Face. Who's familiar with Face? Facebook AI similarity search. A few of you. OK, who's familiar with vector databases? Most of you are familiar with vector databases. Great. If you're familiar with vector databases, you should know this vector database. Face is like, I would say, like the OG kind of like vector database, right? Uh, and then I use Hugging Face for my embeddings. Uh, everyone here is familiar with Hugging Face, right? Raise your hand. You know Hugging Face. OK, great. Uh, and then I use, like I said, not Llama Index. I use Langchain. Um, but don't worry. I am in the process of building an example with Llama Index. Uh, so next time, hopefully, you can get Jerry to come out, and I'll show him my example. Um, and I've asked nine questions. Uh, and these questions are just, like I said, toy questions. Two of them are impossible questions. And then I did evaluation with Arise AI. I think Arise also hosts a lot of events out of GitHub. Um, so yeah. OK, so oh, sh OK. Uh, yeah, so let's, I'm going to, I got 10 minutes. So I'm going to walk you through the code. All right, here we go. Let's see. RAG cookbooks. All right. Everyone can see this? Thumbs up. Everyone can see this? You can read this? OK, cool. Um, so I'm just going to quick, quickly walk you through the code. There, it's almost the exact same code. I'm literally just using a different model. So 
First, we're going to install a bunch of things from Langchain, and then we're going to install Arise, and then we're going to install OpenAI. And then I'm going to get my API tokens here. Um, so uh, this is just environment variable kind of stuff. If you guys are familiar with environment variables, you probably know how to do this. Uh, here, all I'm doing is I'm launching Phoenix. So Phoenix helps me do tracing. It helps me do evals. It helps me do all this kind of shit. And um, yeah, all I'm only doing here is launching it. I'm launching it for Langchain. I'm adjusting some data. Um, OK, so this part may be interesting to look at, right? So what we're doing here is we're opening this entire directory. We're going to read open. We're going to read the entire directory. The directory is a bunch of test files. Uh, a bunch of text files. Here's an example of what these text files look like. Right? They're just a bunch of text. Nothing special about these files. Nothing fancy. They're all Wikipedia. I just scraped Wikipedia. So we're going to read these in, and then we're going to do this thing here where we chunk it. So everybody here, everyone's familiar with chunking. Chunk, chunk size? Well, you will be after the demos. Um, so I've set these all at 800, 200. Why did I set these at 800, 200? Uh, it's just a random number I picked. Um, OK, and then once we, oh, but I, this is important. So separators are actually quite important, because if you mess around with the separators, you'll find that using different separators will give you different um, actual chunks. And sometimes what you'll end up with is you'll end up with these like really, really big chunks if you use like rare separators, like two, like a double new line. Uh, that was what I originally went with, and I had chunk sizes in the 2000s, and I was like, this doesn't seem very fair. So um, I use a custom separator here, and then basically all I'm doing is chunking these up, storing them into a vector database. And like I said, hugging face, hugging face embeddings. Uh, hugging face, we're creating a vector store from face, right? Uh, Facebook AI similarity search. We have 543 entries, so like I said, very, very small example. In production, you will probably be looking at hundreds of thousands to millions at the very smallest. And then all we're going to do here is we're going to create some way to search the data. So here you can see I'm using uh, Llama 3, 1, 8 billion. And it's going to give me a um, max tokens output of 1024. I set this temperature to zero, um, just so that we kind of get a more repeatable, deterministic, okay, ish, uh, repeatable kind of output, okay? So that's kind of what this is for. We create a retriever, and then I say, hey, you're a helpful tour guide. You're going to get some context. Answer the question, okay? And then I give it some questions. I give it some context. And then I read through these questions. So we're going to read through nine questions, because I still have time. So I have it list the cities from the oldest to youngest, Paris, Berlin, San Francisco. And then I ask, which historical monuments should I visit in Cairo? I ask if Chicago is more or less populated than New York. I think most of these three questions you guys probably all know the answer to. Um, and then I ask it to compare and contrast nightlife in Houston and Moscow. And I ask about which city has a more active tech scene. Oh, I should really should see if I can run this live. Okay, I'm gonna try to run this live and see if this works. This might take a bit of time, so I'm just gonna loop through this. All right, hopefully I didn't break anything here. Uh, let me see. It seems to be running. Okay, so uh, I asked it about uh, San Francisco or Lisbon, which has a more active tech scene. So I think you guys probably know San Francisco is probably more active than Lisbon. Uh, which city has a more active financial sector, London or Boston? I don't know the answer to this one, but I think it's London. Um, where is the, I, oh shit, I broke something. Okay, well. Uh-oh. All right, well, I broke something on this, so that's embarrassing, but uh, you'll see the results that I got last time, anyway. Um, where is the Eiffel Tower located? Everyone knows, Paris, France, right? And then the last two are uh, impossible questions. So there are some questions that your LLM is never going to be able to answer correctly. And these are examples, well, OK, maybe not the last one. But the second to last one, when should I visit the Empire State Building in Houston? There is no Empire State Building in Houston. So your LLM will never be able to give you a correct answer to this question. And then the last question is, who is Yujin Tang? So I am not very famous yet, um, but um, at least not according to Llama 3. And Llama 3.1 and Mr. All's cutoff dates. Nobody knows me yet. So let's see if I can get this to run again this time. If not, I'm just going to show you the results. All right. So, all right. So there's, uh, okay, let's see. There's a couple evals that we're doing here. 
So hallucinations. Does anyone think which, uh, let's see, raise your hand if you think 3.1 had more hallucinations. I see one person with like a very like timid hand raise. Yes, yes, raise your hand. Be confident, okay, yes. Have, have some belief in yourself, guys. Come on. All right, who thinks that Mistral had more hallucinations? Raise your hand. Ah, there we go. Here's some people with more confidence. So the people who don't like Mistral have more confidence. That's what I've learned today. Um, all right, and then uh, QA correctness, whether or not it answered the question correctly. Who, think, who thinks that 3-1 uh, answered more questions correctly? Okay, a lot of you. Who thinks that Mistral answered more questions correctly? No one. Wow, okay. Jeez, I hope, uh, I hope Sophia is watching this. Um, all right, uh, relevance. I don't remember all the relevance metrics, so I'm just gonna go towards these metrics. So these are the results for Llama 3.1. I ran nine traces, which is, like I said before, this is like a very, very small number of traces. When you are really running this in production, you're gonna wanna run like 9,000. Uh, okay, so this was nine traces of 29,656 tokens, a P50 latency of about a second, a P99 latency of about two seconds. Remember what you said earlier about which one you thought was faster? Remember what you said, because I don't. There's too many of you for me to remember. Uh, but remember what you said and you know, compare it to the actual results. Um, I use the same internet on both of these, so you know, hopefully it should give somewhat similar results anyway. Um, hallucinated about 22% of the time, that's two out of nine, which makes sense, right? The last two questions that I asked it, it could not have answered without hallucinating. Uh, QA correctness, so it was correct most of the time. And I don't actually remember what these relevance metrics mean, so I'm not going to go over them. All right, so before we go into Mistral 73B's results, does anyone want to change any of their answers? Does anyone now think that Mistral might have been faster? No one wants to change their answers. All right, we're going to go look. So you'll see Mistral 7B, very similar, very, very, very similar profile. So it's been about, remember, they spent about nine months uh, training Llama 3.1, and it gets a very similar result to Mr. L7B, which was released in September of 2023. So who thinks that that was a good use of a few billion dollars? I don't know. I mean, you can see the hallucination and correctness, almost the exact same. I would say it looks like Llama 3.1 is a little bit faster at 50. Um, and that's about it. It uses, Mr. L7B uses a few more tokens. So I've got about two minutes left on stage before we do a bathroom break. Does anyone have any questions for me? Were you running the quantized version or the full version? I was running the full version. The person behind you has a question. Why didn't you let us say a tie? What? A tie between the hallucination and the QA correctness. Why do I think there's a, a No, no. I, I you you gave us oh, why do a I binary think a option. Oh. I was oh, going to yes, answer tie. Because I specifically wanted you to answer incorrectly so you would feel bad about yourself. Okay. Well, I don't, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> okay. um, I, it's, I, just, I just wanted to see what people would do. I, I forgot that the tie was an option. That's, that's why. But you knew it was a tie. Well, I, okay, sorry. I forgot. Apologies. I'm just, can you pass the mic to this guy? Thank you. Uh, what's the probability that the hallucin hallucination and QA correctness evaluations didn't run a second time and you just have a stored same value? Um, the probability is zero because I rebooted my Phoenix instance. Yes, Phoenix, Arise Phoenix, not Phoenix, Tavis Phoenix. We should really do an event together so we can have like a duo Phoenix event. Okay. Can, I, yes. can I ask one follow-up? Why do you think it is that they tied? Why do I think it's a tie? Um, probably because I only <laughs> asked nine questions, seven of which I feel like it should have answered like no matter what, and two of which was I was like, these questions are impossible, it should be wrong all the time. So actually, it shows that both models are very high quality because they answered all seven models, all seven questions that you would expect it to get correct, correctly. Any other questions? We have time for like one more question. Uh, two questions. First, regarding the latency, how much do you feel like the time differences are due to like, I take it like these are hosted models on like. Yes, so these are hosted models. So I have zero control over latency. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would say is I tested both these on the same internet and it looks like the latency at P99 is actually very similar, right? This is two, this is two point, oops. Oop. This is 2.04, this is 2.08. They're basically the same. Yeah. Uh, and the second thing is, do you remember like what the models answered for the last two questions, like some sort? 
Do I remember why? Uh, what the answers were, like the responses for the last two. Like, was there a difference in the answers? The answers were pretty similar. The All right, that's my time. The answers were pretty similar. Mistral was a bit longer, um, but I don't remember all the exact uh, answers because, well, I was hoping to be able to run it live, but clearly I had a bug in my code and it did not work. So, all right, guys, let's take a bathroom break. Let's reconvene in about like 10 to 15 minutes. We've got 14 pitches. There was going to be 15, but someone had to back out at the last minute. So, there'll be 14 pitches later. Thank <laughs> you.